Three weeks ago, before my two-week break, I rewatched The Lighthouse. And I know this movie came out like two years ago, but I swear, it's one of my favorites of all time. I was blown away when this thing came out. The visuals, the sound design, the performances, it's like nothing else. And the references, oh my god. I've never been on Wikipedia so much to make a video, but it was so much fun to finally put this video together. So welcome to Classic Explained, episode 11, The Lighthouse. To break it down, I'm going to use three themes. One, power of knowledge, where we'll discuss dominance and control, authority versus rebellion, Wake's previous worker, the Siegel death, and Winslow's turn to rebellion. Two, misery of stagnation, where we'll discuss Winslow's descent into madness, Greek titan Prometheus, Greek sea god Proteus, Wake's shapeshifting, Wake's tentacles, Wake's curse speech on Winslow, Wake's gaslighting, and the mermaid. And three, loss of innocence, where we'll discuss Winslow's name change, the real frame Winslow, the shot of Wake shooting light from his eyes at Winslow, Wake barking like a dog, Wake's burial monologue, what is inside the light of the lighthouse, Wake's sexual attraction, to the light, and the final shot in the film of Winslow with the seagulls, and much more. And if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up and a comment, it helps so much. And if you want to see more of these, please make sure to subscribe as well. Let's get started. Theme number one, power of knowledge. So when it comes to a movie like this, there are so many different symbols and sub-themes and references that it becomes hard to figure out what the overall meaning of the film is. But after going through all of the details, which of course we will cover throughout this video, I feel like I've grasped my interpretation of the overall meaning of this movie. So to me, the main idea that this entire movie is trying to capture is this. The never-ending and relentless struggle between mankind for dominance through the power of knowledge. Knowing what other people don't know and need to know is one of the ultimate forms of power. And this power of knowledge, essentially, is what allows each of these characters to gain dominance over the other. So to me, these characters represent two opposing sides of society throughout history. Thomas Wake represents authority. He's the equivalent in society to an oppressive government, a corrupt political leader, or even a tyrannical ruler. His authority and status comes from his experience and knowledge of the island and the role of lighthouse keeper. And as a result, he has power, influence, and control over Winslow. Ephraim Winslow, on the other hand, represents rebellion. At first, he is very obedient and impressionable, the equivalent in society to the working class, where the individual would follow rules and directions in order to build and maintain a comfortable lifestyle. He follows the manual, works tirelessly to complete his daily tasks, and obeys Wake's every word. He even plans eventually to earn enough money to provide for a wife and children. Later, however, we see him slowly lose touch with Wake's rules and directions in order to break free from the power and dominance that Wake has over him. And we will dive a lot further into Winslow Winslow's turn to rebellion later in this video. But what's really interesting is that this central conflict of authority versus rebellion is also represented by the Greek mythological figures that these two main characters were inspired by, Proteus and Prometheus. But also, we'll talk a lot more about Proteus and Prometheus later in this video. So overall, just to summarize the representation of these two characters, Thomas Wake represents an authoritative figure doing everything it can to maintain its power over the obedient worker that it can manipulate, utilize, and control. And we see this idea demonstrated in many ways throughout the film. One of these ways is Wake often forces his mythical, spiritual, and religious beliefs on Winslow. Historically, we've had manipulative political figures cast their beliefs upon their people to get them to do just about anything. Also, manipulative religious leaders can use religion, which can be good for a lot of people, for the opposite, to confuse them and get them to do things they shouldn't do. Wake is also strategic and wise in the knowledge he decides to share and decides to hide from Winslow. Wake gives Winslow all of the appropriate directions to clean, rebuild, and maintain the various structures on the island. However, while Winslow is doing his best, Wake is grading him at the lowest level on his report and specifically noting that he should be terminated for his incompetence. And I believe the reason Wake's character is doing this is to represent how an oppressive, powerful body of authority will do its best to keep the working class in their place and prevent them from progressing into 
higher levels of status. It's the cynical representation of this repetitive cycle of chewing up and spitting out the working class. And why I say it represents a repetitive cycle is because the lighthouse keeper under Wake before Winslow suffered an almost identical fate to Winslow. When Winslow asks, what made your last keeper leave? Wake answers, died, went mad he did, raven about sirens, merfolk, bad omens, and the like. In the end, weren't no sense left in him than a hen's tooth. He believed that there was some enchantment in the light. And this almost identical repetition of the acts and fates of Wake's workers all represents this tragic, never-ending loop in society of obedience to rebellion to chaos to self-destruction. And in this movie, from beginning to end, we get to witness this cycle take place. And most importantly, as we all know, the knowledge that Wake will never share with Winslow is what is in the light of the lighthouse. I'll speak about what I think is in the light and why Wake is trying to hide it, but I'll do that at the end of this video, just so we have more context for my interpretation. Wake does have a stronger understanding of the supernatural things that can occur on the island, and he passes some of this knowledge on to protect his obedient worker, Winslow, and himself. Most notably, he passionately urges Winslow to never kill a seagull because of the potential dire consequences it could have on the island. Wake mentions that seagulls carry the souls of past sailors, and we actually see these consequences play out when Winslow loses his temper and does decide to kill a seagull. And this moment where Winslow kills the seagull is the beginning of his transition from representing obedience to representing rebellion in search of greater control and higher power. All in this moment, Winslow is letting go of the rules, disrespecting the beliefs and the traditions of the lighthouse keepers, and dismissing the supernatural presence of the sailors who have worked on the island before. And it makes sense that at this moment, we witness a shift in the wind, prefacing the shift in Winslow's character, and the chaos that is about to ensue when this power struggle between rebellion and authority builds to a disastrous climax. Theme number two, misery of stagnation. In one scene in the film, we hear Wake talking about the worst part of a sailor's life. Doldrums, doldrums, eviler than the devil. Boredom makes men to villains, and the water goes quick, lad. Vanished, the only medicine is drink. Doldrums basically means a state or period of inactivity, stagnation, or depression. And Wake's quote is a moment of foreshadowing for what happens later on in the film. Winslow is in the horrific situation of being trapped on this island for an indefinite length of time, and he doesn't even know whether he'll make it through the storm alive. And if he doesn't eventually make it off the island, there is no point in working so hard or even listening to Wake at all. He's losing his concept of purpose, meaning, and time and this essentially is what is driving Winslow into madness. But it's also this moment of stagnation that allows Winslow to become more rebellious and gain more and more dominance over Wake. And this is where the Greek mythology comes in. The character of Winslow is inspired by Greek titan god of fire, Prometheus. Prometheus was a tricky and rebellious figure in Greek mythology. This ties in nicely with Winslow's representation of rebellion and his growing ambition to dominate or defeat the character representing authority. Prometheus is most popularly known for stealing fire from Zeus at the top of Mount Olympus and giving it to the rest of humanity to spark intelligent life and develop human civilization. This ties in really closely with how Winslow defeated Wake, climbed to the top of the lighthouse, and gained access to the light. Prometheus was eventually punished by Zeus by being chained to the side of a mountain where an eagle would eat him alive forever. And quite obviously, this ties in perfectly with the final shot, which we will talk a lot more about at the end of this video. Wake represents Greek god of rivers and oceans, Proteus, the old man of the sea. Proteus was also known as the friend to the beasts of the sea and the keeper of knowledge. However, he hated sharing his vast knowledge. This ties in closely with Wake's experience as a lighthouse keeper and his vast knowledge of the island and the supernatural forces of the island. Proteus also has the ability to shapeshift, which is why we see Wake transforming into different characters, and we'll certainly talk about these specific characters very soon in this video. 
And Wake's tentacles, of course, are purposed simply to reflect the half-man, half-sea beast illustrations of Proteus. And as Winslow defies the authority of Wake more and more, we see Wake exercise more of his power the same way an authoritative leader would combat rebellion. The best example of this is when Winslow has an outburst towards Wake, insulting his cooking, his habit of drinking, and his lack of self-awareness. And Wake responds with a relentless curse on Winslow about King Neptune killing him by bursting his body with his trident. A bulging bladder no more, but a blasted bloody film. Now nothing for the harpies and the souls of dead sailors to peck and claw and feed upon. And this quote ties in perfectly with the fate of Prometheus and the ending of this movie. Which leads me to think that Wake ultimately has knowledge or some supernatural control over the fate of Winslow. And I'll explain why I think Wake has these special abilities and supernatural understanding of the island at the end of this video. And considering all of Wake's abilities and his desire to maintain his dominance over Winslow, it leads me to think that Winslow was not as delusional as he may have thought that he was. I think Wake was gaslighting Winslow at every opportunity in order to keep Winslow below him and in his control, while Wake himself was also aware that he was losing his mind from the lack of fresh water, food, and resources on the island. The only supernatural thing that happened that I think was beyond Wake's control was the storm that erupted after Winslow upset the sailor spirits of the island by killing the seagull. I just don't think Wake would create such a storm that would lose him his dominance and lead to his own suffering and eventual death. And I noticed that he seemed the most persistent and desperate and afraid when he told Winslow not to kill a seagull. And when it comes to the mermaid, I think Wake placed this trinket in Winslow's mattress for him to find. I'm assuming it was some kind of cursed trinket that would sexually distract Winslow from gaining curiosity about the light at the top of the lighthouse and give him these vivid visions of sexual activity with this mermaid. And symbolically, the mermaid represents Winslow's unfulfilled sexual and romantic desires that may distract him from his own personal progress. In Greek mythology, they're called sirens. They're bad omens foretelling disaster and provoking it. They supposedly lured sailors to their deaths with their melodies and enchanting songs. This is why after she lures Winslow towards her and he begins touching her body, we hear some sort of cursed call that seems to be elevating his anxiety anxiety and boosting his paranoia. And this pretty interesting shot here is symbolic of how consumed Winslow has become by his magnified sexual frustration, desires, and fantasies. Wake, on the other hand, seems to be sexually aroused by the light in the lighthouse. He even abandoned his wife and family for the light of the lighthouse, and I'll explain why he's doing this at the end of the video. Theme number three, loss of innocence. One of the most interesting moments in the film is when we learn that Ephraim Winslow is not actually Winslow's real name. His name is actually Thomas Howard, and he stole the real Ephraim Winslow's identity, who died in front of him in a logging accident. But just for the sake of not being really confusing, I will still call Robert Pattinson's character Winslow for the rest of this video, and I'll call this guy the real Winslow. So Winslow may have killed the real Winslow, and I think he did, because throughout this movie, Winslow has various dreams and hallucinations of the real Winslow and the logging accident, blended with his delusions on the island, including the siren. And I think these dreams and hallucinations of the real Winslow are fueled by his guilty conscience of killing him. And I think this moment of revealing the possibility that Winslow's killed the real Winslow, and the fact that Winslow's first name is actually the same as Wake's first name, signifies the loss of innocence for Winslow, and represents the fact that in Winslow's transition from innocent and obedient to sinful and rebellious, he is essentially slowly becoming just like Wake, seeking dominance over the opposition and obsessed with the power within the lighthouse. And after Winslow reveals this truth about his real name to Wake, we hear echoes in Winslow's head of Wake's voice saying, why do you spill your beans, Tommy? And essentially, what I think this means for the film is giving up the power of your hidden knowledge will be the death of you. 
Something Wake has learned that Winslow is beginning to learn. And right after this, we get this shot of Winslow seeing himself on the ground and Wake shooting light from his eyes into Winslow's eyes. This shot was inspired by the artwork Hypnosis by Sasha Schneider. And I think the point of this shot is just to emphasize further that Winslow is becoming a reflection of Wake, as I mentioned before. He is taking in the insight and mindset of Wake in order to save himself, as we literally see in this shot. And it's in the third act of the film that we see Winslow completely reverse the dominance between him and Wake. He tells Wake to bark like a dog after beating him up and walks him outside, demonstrating ownership over another human being, like a slave and a master. And as Wake is being buried alive, he has this monologue that basically captures the theme of the loss of innocence in search of power and dominance. So here's the monologue. Oh, what protein forms swim up from men's minds and melt in hot Promethean plunder, scorching eyes with diving shames and horror and casting them down to Davy Jones. The others still blind, yet in it see all the divine graces, and to the fiddler's green sent where no man is suffered, or want to toil, but is ancient, mutable, and unchanging, as she who girdles round the globe. Them's truth, you'll be punished. And when I first heard this monologue, I was so confused because all of the sailors speak, so I decided to put together a translated version that made it a lot easier for me to understand. Oh, whatever changing ideas arise in men's minds and lead to rebellious theft, committing the most shameful and horrific acts and eventually being sent to the devil of the sea. Everyone else is still blind, yet see the beauty of the world, and are sent to heaven where no man suffers, but is forever changing and unchanging like the moon. This is true. You will be punished. And I think what Wake is saying here is that the most innocent and obedient of people know nothing. However, their innocence allows them to live peacefully and eventually allows them into heaven. And unfortunately, the rebellious and sinful path Winslow has chosen through curiosity will be the death of him. He is more powerful and knowledgeable than innocent people by trespassing, killing, and stealing. But his guilt and paranoia will consume him, and he will eventually suffer in hell after death. He will be punished. So of course, after Wake is axed by Winslow, Winslow climbs to the top of the lighthouse and finally gets to see the light. And when he looks in, he looks incredibly fulfilled, like this overflowing fulfillment that is so overwhelming that it's actually driving him insane. So what's in the light? Well, of course, such an answer is entirely up to your own interpretation. But for me, based on this analysis and based on this video, I think that what's inside the light is this divine form of knowledge, like a glimpse into what God knows, what only God would know. A concept of knowledge that is beyond what humans can comprehend and can only experience if they come face to face with this light. This is why I think Wake has always been so in touch with the supernatural forces of this island. He's interacting with them through this light, or he at least understands them through this light. Wake being the head lighthouse keeper and protector of this light reflects Proteus, who he represents, who is known as the keeper of knowledge. Such a level of power from knowledge has replaced the need for so many of the beautiful things that regular people experience in life, which is why Wake isolates himself on this island and is completely okay with it. He doesn't need love, he doesn't need family, the power of the light has completely replaced that. It's as if Wake has created his own hell that he can't escape and doesn't want to escape. The same hell that many power-hungry, disconnected, and sinful authoritative leaders have worked toward their whole lives. A powerful, sad, and tragic hell they love living in. So I think this ending that we see here is completely metaphorical for Winslow, just like Wake, trading his innocence for greater power through divine knowledge. But such a loss of innocence has sent him into this downward spiral, into madness, by his guilt and paranoia for his sinful choices. And mirroring the fate of Prometheus, after death, Winslow suffers a hellish fate cast upon him by the supernatural forces that he betrayed from the very beginning. 
All right, that's my analysis. Subscribe for weekly videos and please send me recommendations. I honestly don't know which movie's next because I'm still monitoring the poll with these four movies, but thank you so much for voting. And please let me know your thoughts and ideas around the lighthouse because I know there are a million different little details and I would really love to hear the unique insights. I hope to see you again and thank you so much for watching. See you later.